In the previous video, we introduced Cramer's rule, and we looked at the conditions under which we can use Cramer's rule to solve a system of linear equations. We also looked at an example of a system with three equations and three unknowns using Cramer's rule. Let's look at two more examples. Here's our first system. I've got three equations and three unknowns. Now, Cramer's rule can be expanded to bigger systems, or it can be used on a two-by-two two system, two equations and two unknowns. Um, the system, the process stays the same. So what we've got here, I've got my coefficient matrix A and my matrix B is the constants on the right-hand side. So we know to be able to use Cramer's rule, the determinant of my coefficient matrix has to be non-zero. So let's start by calculating the determinant of A. I'm going to use the second row to calculate the determinant of A because there's a zero in it. So it's less calculations to do, less chance for mistakes. So it's 2 times minus 1 to the power row 2, column 1. So it's 2 plus 1 times the determinant of 4, minus 1, minus 1, 3. Plus 1 times minus 1 to the power 2 plus 2, row 2, column 2, times the determinant of minus 1, minus 1, 1, and 3, plus 0. All right. So that gives me 2 times minus 1, so it's minus 2 times 12, Minus 1 is minus 11. Plus 1 times 1, so it's plus 1 times minus 3, minus minus 1, so it's minus 3 plus 1, so it's minus 2. So I've got minus 22 minus 2, which is minus 24. Right, that's the determinant of my coefficient matrix A, that, it, that is non-zero, so I can use Cramer's rule. So I'm not going to use it to calculate x1, x2, and x3. I'm just going to pick one of them. I'm going to pick x3. So to calculate the value of x3, what I need is I need to find the determinant of a3. Now the matrix a3 I get by taking the matrix a and replacing the third column with minus 6, 3, and 3, these values. So first two columns stay the same, minus 1, 4, 2, 1, and 1, minus 1. I'm going to use the first row to calculate the determinant. You can use any row or any column, and I suggest you use a different row column than the me to see if we can get to the same answer. It's good practice for calculating determinants. So it's minus 1 to the power times minus 1 to the power 1 plus 1 times the determinant. If I eliminate that row column, so it's 1, 3, minus 1, 3, plus 4 times minus 1 to the power row 1, column 2, times the determinant of 2, 3, 1, 3. Minus 6 times minus 1 to the power row 1, column 3, times the determinant of 2, 1, 1, minus 1. So let's see what that gives me. Minus 1 times 1 is minus. 3 minus minus 3 is 3 plus 3, so that gives me 6. Minus 4 times 6 minus 3 is 3. Minus 6 times minus 1 to the power 4, so it's minus 6 times. Minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3. So it's 18 minus 12 minus 6. That gives me 0. It's not a problem. It's not my coefficient matrix. But that means to calculate x3, it's the determinant of A3 over the determinant of A, which is 0 over minus 24, which gives us 0. So the value of x3 is 0. Now, you can use this example if you want to practice more to find x1 and x2, and you can find that x1 is equal to 2. I'm not going to go through the calculation. And x2 is equal to minus 1. And then we calculate it, x3 is equal to 0. But you can this do, use this for more practice using Cramer's rule. Now, we come up with unique solutions of these systems. So if you want practice on using Gaussian elimination, you know what the answer is using Cramer's rule. And Cramer's rule seems a bit quicker, doesn't it? But you can use to practice Gaussian elimination, you can use the same system and see that you get to the same answer. All right. So just to show you, if we've got a, two equations, two unknowns, we can still use Cramer's rule. It's much quicker, much easier. The determinant of A is then the determinant of the matrix 3, 2, minus 2, minus 5. That's the coefficient matrix. So that gives me minus 15, minus minus 4, so it's minus 15 plus 4, so that's minus 11. The determinant of A1 
is the determinant I'm putting in the first column, 10 and minus 3, but the second column stays the same, 2 and minus 5. So that gives me minus 50, minus minus 6, so it's minus 50 plus 6, so it's minus 44. So that means x is the determinant of a1 divided by the determinant of a, so it is minus 44 over minus 11, which is 4. So what a quick, easy way to calculate x here. Now to calculate y, we find the determinant of a2. So we take our coefficient matrix a and we substitute the second column with 10 and minus 3. And that determinant is minus 9 plus 20. So that's 11. So my value of y is the determinant of a2 over the determinant of a. So that's 11 over minus 11, which gives you minus 1. And you can substitute those values of x and y in and see that they do satisfy this equation. So Kramer's rule is very nice to use if you can calculate determinants quickly, but there is a restriction. And that is the coefficient matrix has to be square and the determinant has to be non-zero. So Kramer's rule helps me to find solutions if there is a unique solution. Where we saw using Gaussian elimination led us to Unique solution, no solution, infinite number of solutions, all the options were covered by Gaussian elimination, where Kramer's rule is only can only be used in the case where I have a unique solution. And I test that by finding the determinant of the coefficient matrix, which is then non-zero. But that is using Kramer's rule, some nice mathematics to solve systems of linear equations.